I want to bring in Democratic analyst Jonathan Harris now to talk more about this, along with News Nation political contributor Denise Gitchum, Republican strategist and former aide to former President George W. Bush. Uh, thanks, both of you, for being here. Uh, Denise, let me start with you and just piggybacking on what Joe was saying ahead of former President Trump's meeting with Senate Republicans later today. What do you foresee the, the tougher challenges in trying to coalesce senators around Trump right now? Well, you know, senators have that, it was, in, it was designed constitutionally this way by our founders. They have a much longer election cycle. <clears throat> they have six years that they have to worry about instead of every two. And so they are a little more independent in the way that they think. And a lot of those guys have been in there forever you know, putting aside the McConnells and a lot of the other old guard that many of whom are less relevant now that we have a new, you know, sort of row of like Trump folks that are in. I think that it'll be really interesting to see how they react to the president because they're not as rah-rah as a lot of the House Republicans are because they're not as dependent on President Trump as a lot of the House Republicans are to get reelected. So it'll be an interesting conversation, I'm sure, and I really wish I was in there to watch it. Yeah, me too, you and me both. Uh, Jonathan, <laughs> how do Democrats interpret this visit right now of former President Trump to Washington? Well, I mean, I hope that what they're walking away from is the reality that for the most part, the Republicans are going to fall in line. Uh, even a lot of those people, I mean, Mitch McConnell spoke out uh, quite vehemently against Trump, especially uh, about the terrorist attack that he launched on the United States on January 6th. Mitch McConnell was very vocal about that. But at the end of the day, uh, what, I, what Democrats take away from this, I hope, is that uh, all of them are going to fall in line at the end of the day and that you know, it's it's surreal, though, and I hope Democrats call out that, you know, Donald Trump today is meeting with uh, Republican lawmakers and just uh, a few days ago was meeting with his parole officer uh, as a part of a pre-sentencing for being convicted of 34 felonies. And he's running as the head of the so-called Christian Evangelical Party and the Law and Order Party. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think... To some extent or another, politics is about narrative building, uh, and I really would encourage the Democrats to run with building a narrative about the absolute absurdity of that. I mean, that's something that if you wrote for, you know, the Twilight Zone 50 years ago, they would have said it was too unrealistic, but it's it's where we are today. So. Uh, <laughs> Just definitely sure that the Republicans are falling in line. We're, I mean, we're in some uncharted political territory, uh, both sides speaking, um, grounds we've never been in before. I think what I appreciate, uh, Jonathan and Denise, is the focus on issues right now. Um, at least it appears that lawmakers on the GOP side want to talk about that today, uh, beginning with immigration right now. And both President, former President Trump and President Biden have very differing views about what the future looks like of immigration as we see migrants crossing in record numbers across the border. Denise, how do you believe that former President Trump uh, will portray his message and strategy to, to the voting public, especially those who are not his staunch supporters, but those on the fence come November? No, I think that what I've heard, at least from friends of mine who are sort of on the fence, which are the independent voters are going to really make the difference because, you know, you can you can really rally that MAGA base and they're going to be there regardless. So in life, you know, that 30 percent that love you or hate you are not that relevant. What matters is that 70 percent in the middle, which is the people who are going to be deciding in the swing states. And what I'm hearing from my friends who really aren't committed to either side is that they have a choice between somebody who they might find personally disgusting, may not like the way he talks, may not like who he is, and may find that the conviction was warranted. And on the other hand, they're thinking, you know, they're still not decided in spite of all those, those thoughts they have about President Trump. And on the other side, they're saying there's a president that's proven that he really can't run our country well, which is why 70 plus percent of folks think that our country's on the wrong track. And so they're saying, you know, our, our world seems more dangerous since President Biden's been in. I'm less able to flourish. The border's less secure. I feel less safe. So given that choice between someone I might find personally disgusting and somebody who I might consider to be dangerous, I'm going to pick disgusting every single time because that is less of an existential threat to who, to my life, to my experience as an American. Your response to that, Jonathan, uh, given the turmoil that we've seen at the border and Biden's recent executive action that so far has, has not done much to, to sway the crossings. Well, I, rather than talking about people that I speak to personally, I'll just go to 
the polling and it's really all we have to look at right now in terms of you know quantifiable data and the polls show that there is a 50 50 split right now mm -hmm. all within the margin of error between the two of them so at the end of the day uh neither one of them are really swaying america one way or the other but i think to suggest that um, the country isn't better off. We just had a terrific, uh, another terrific jobs report in May. That means more people are back to work. That means uh, wages are up, et cetera, et cetera. That's just not true. And it's, but again, it's incumbent upon Democrats to say this stuff. It's incumbent upon them to point out that there was a huge spike in illegal immigration under Donald Trump and that his response was putting kids in cages, separating kids from their families. Jeff Sessions, you must remember, said that that was part of a deterrent. It wasn't an accident. They were doing it on purpose. And I don't think any middle of the road American wants that kind of approach back with immigration to separate uh, children from their families. Some of those families were never able to be reunited. And if Democrats are doing what they're supposed to be doing, they're gonna make that contrast very, very clear. And that President Biden stands ready to sign legislation, not executive orders that can be reversed by any president immediately, but legislation to address this problem that has everything in it that the Republicans said that they wanted. And Donald Trump told them not to do it so he could campaign on it, which means he doesn't think the border is a problem because if he did, he would want it solved right now, but he doesn't. So, but that, that really falls on the Democrats. I mean, they are running against a man found liable for rape and convicted of 34 felonies uh, not too long ago, they should be able to build a logical narrative against this guy. These two people should not be neck and neck in the polls. So, that's but they, all but they are. And going into this first debate, um, it is extremely close. Uh, I just have about a minute left uh, in total. But Denise, what are your expectations for this first debate on the 27th? Well, anything can happen, as we've seen when Donald Trump is on a stage like that. Anything can happen. And the fact that there are so many rules that have been imposed by the Biden campaign means that they're aware that they have to put you know, restrictions on sort of what Donald Trump might say and how he might act. And so, it, you know, it'll be interesting. The, the difference in tone and demeanor could not be more stark. And we've seen it ever since they first started running against each other in 2020. This is there's nothing. I don't think we're going to see anything that we wouldn't expect, um, but it will be exciting, I think, because Americans really do need to see once and for all that juxtaposition, you know, four years into a Biden administration where 70 percent of our nation says we're on the wrong track. And, you know, Biden is being pummeled by Trump on the issues that matter most to Americans, the you know immigration issue, the border issue, security, economy and well, inflation. The polls, These know. are things. Well, I mean, I'm not sure which polls you're looking at, but every the poll CBS has news polls Donald brand Trump. new literally dominating Biden on those three issues, which are the top issues to Americans, which is why, as you pointed out, Jonathan, Democrats do need to make the case, but they're not either not making it or it's just not resonating with people because that's not how they actually feel. And that's the benefit of being outside of the beltway for me is that I talk to everyday Americans who are actually making these decisions and thinking about how their lives affected. They're not as influenced by talking points by the parties. They actually just care about how their president makes them feel. And those people are overwhelmingly choosing president President Trump over and over. It's up to the American well, public to see through the talking points. But jo Jonathan and Denise, I'm out of time. Thank you both. As always, we'll have you back and we'll continue the conversation at that time. Uh, always good to see you. Thank good you, Marnie. Thing.